Hello and welcome to Tambara. My name is Evelyn. I'm joined by Cornelius and Tafara for such a long time. Hello, Tafara. Hello, Queen. Hi, happy. Happy to be back. So, this is the last Tambara shoot of the year. So, you're going to be back next year. And today, we're going to talk about the Morgan and Core Multi Sector Exchange Traded Fund. A lot of few people have been asking what's that about. Why would I be rushing over to invest in that ETF? So these guys are here to tell us about it. So let's start off. What is it about? What is the inspiration behind it? So I think um, let's first start off with um, what is an ETF? Uh, so an exchange traded fund is a financial instrument that tracks an underlying index or a basket of securities, a sector, even gold, um, tobacco, any commodity really, and any asset. Uh, so ours is going to track um, a basket of about five securities. It's going to start with um, Old Mutual Zimbabwe, uh, NMB, uh, First Capital, uh, FML, and uh, ZHL. And um, we have leeway to adjust the underlying portfolio because it's actively managed, um, whereas the Old Mutual one is passively managed. So we can actually change the constituents as we see fit. Yeah, and just uh, to add on to that, the ETF is a way to gain exposure into certain themes, like you said, um, and just as a high liquidity profile. So the underlying stocks can be uh, quite illiquid compared to the ETF itself. So it allows people to move in and out of positions quickly and easily, which is a huge plus for asset managers, especially when they're closing down for the year and they want to stay exposed to the market. Uh, but they don't, they don't really have to, much liquidity to move into the individual stocks that they want to. So, like I said, I think the guys have just gone far too ahead of all of us. <laughs> so, okay, wait. So, you said it's an actively managed fund, yeah. it's not a passive uh, ETF. Can you explain the differences between those two? Right, so, with an active, actively managed ETF, you have an asset manager uh, that actively makes decisions on a daily basis about the underlying portfolio. Whereas with the passive ETF, um, you're just sitting back and allowing the underlying index to do the work. So you don't select the underlying index. You don't change the, its constituents. It just tracks that. That's all you do. All you do is rebalance periodically, like um, the ZDC top 10 index. So if it changes, uh, Old Mutual changes it. I think it's once every three months, once every four months. So um, they, this is more relaxed. They're not daily, like you don't have old mutual investment group looking at the decision making of the investments. It's just, um, you know, a passively managed thing. Ours is actively managed uh, by TM. Okay, so let's look at global trends. So passively managed funds are hugely popular. Hmm. And the statistics that we picked up, it's 2% are actively managed funds because they don't always perform right. So what do you think you're going to do right? to ensure that it performs, because at the end of the day, it's about returns. You want to give investors returns. It's not some uh, algorithmic, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> educated thing. What I want are returns. So what makes you think that an actively managed fund um, will give those returns when the world over, they underperform the main markets? Okay, so it's good that you mentioned returns. So a uh, passively managed ETF is not really trying to make returns of and above the market, which what which is what we call alpha. They just want to mimic the market. So whatever, let's say the top ten makes the, the returns it makes. That's what the uh, the top ten for what visual makes. But what you want to do is want to beat the expectation that's placed by the market. So over and above what the passively managed ETF. Uh, returns uh, for its investors. We also want to beat that and have what you call alpha on top of that. So that's the edge that we we have with our actively managed ETF. And um, how we'll do that is uh, through a proprietary model that mm -hmm. we've back tested and it has really shown that it works. Mm -hmm. And we want to continue uh, you know, improving the model and ensure that we generate the, the, that alpha for we have invested that in uh, that ETF. Okay, so let's go into your stock selection. Your initial selection, you said Old Mutual. How much has it grown by this year alone on FinSec? So it's been quite illiquid because FinSec in itself is not very active. So why would anyone want to invest in that? 
and um, come back to Tafara's advice, one of the advantages he named, um, the ETF is more liquid in terms of the underlying securities. So ETF allows investors to gain exposure to OMSO, uh, where, the, where, where they will struggle to get it on FinSec directly. If you came with $1,000, it would be tough for you to get um, OMSO shares. But with our ETF, we're going to grant you exposure to OMSO quite easily. Okay, so the next talk, um, Zimmer. How much has that grown by this year? Um, Zimra hasn't really grown much, but it really moved um, last year. Um, we could go all the way. I mean, we could discuss every specific Yes, topic we need to, system. because we mm. need to but at least be the first movers to be able to invest when you do list in January. Mm. We are supposed to be in queue with how much it is say we are listing. So mm. yeah. we want to know why this particular stocks in the first place. And why you think that they'll generate returns um, in the shortest possible time for investors? Because if, I think mostly you're trying to attract retail investors into that and you need quick wins. Yeah. So let me try to start with the broader picture. Yeah. Uh, exposure is mostly in the financial services sector. So let me just speak about that for a while. Work with it. So what you've noticed is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the financial services sector was quite subdued because of inflation and it was, you know, it's quite bad for uh, financial services businesses during high inflation. But what you've seen is inflation has slowed down and um, the central bank has actually increased uh, policy rates which is likely to trickle down to the rates that banks charge on uh, their loans. And what you've seen now is also that you know, because of those two things, banks have started issuing you know, out more loans um, mm -hmm. based on their uh, deposits. Yeah. So the loss to deposit ratio has grown from you know, a low of 31% uh, last year. Now it's about um, 42%. So we see that you know, things are starting to shape up for the financial services sector. And there are other fundamentals that are supporting this. Uh, most of their loan brokers in the agriculture sector. Uh, this is the second year we have a good season. Um, so all those things are good points for the financial services sector. So that's why we have taken position in the financial services sector. Uh, we think that it's quite undervalued and overall it's likely to pick up uh, in 2022. So going down now, yes, into, yes. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, yeah, I, I, I concur with what you said. Um, it is also looking up, you know, there are also banking operations that are likely to shape up. Mm -hmm. um, and we think that's going to trickle down into the fundamental case for Omzo. Um, Zimre is a is more of an insurer business, mm -hmm. but we like its regional footprint. Um, it's been tapping into the region and it's doing well for itself. Uh, and we think it's going to give some good rewards. We've been saying that for a very long time now. I'm <laughs> 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 well, just saying. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the markets have different views, and um, this is the view that we hold, but we are quite certain and we think there's a good opportunity. First, Mitchell. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, there's a movement for uh, the, the, the business to move its reinsurance business and headquarters um, outside the country so that it can better tap into the reinsurance space in Africa. Um, it might take a while, but we're very positive about it as well. Yeah, they already started investing in Mozambique. They recapitalized the subsidiary there recently. Not a big amount, but they are showing intent. Okay. Um, so. This is not your, okay, which one would you say is the winner in your basket or in your stock selection? Which one would you say is the winner? Um, I'll put my money on NMB. I think it's one of the undervalued stocks that you managed to get a, at a good price and we think having it in the ETF is a, is a good win. Uh, we think it's a really good business. It has gotten some really good accolades over the years um, and we think, you know, the market has really priced in all that the, the bank stands for. Okay, so we know you're listing this. The 3rd of January. Who is going to be the to give us dates of the listing ceremony? Um, so hopefully, uh, Dr. Grace Muladzikwa will be able to grace us with her presence. And um, I think she's the perfect fit because uh, she's um, head of IPEC. So she can give um, a lot of light on the insurance companies in the ETF and just on the financial services sector. 
Um, so yeah, your invite is coming soon as well, I think. So. Oh yeah, I invited the day for God. Me. <laughs> it's coming soon. So how quickly does one rebalance that portfolio? I know that's the advantage of an actively managed ETF that you can then quickly swap out. How how fast do you think you can be able to do it? Is it going to be an everyday thing? Is it going to be a two weekly mm -hmm. thing? So I think the beauty of it is that so TN is one of our biggest clients. So on a daily basis, we're talking to Ronald. So he can you know easily say to David um, or Jafara or Batanai that look, I think we should make an investment decision here, and then we'll do our research and see whether or not it's the right decision. So it'll be an active process, and we're going to meet weekly as well uh, to sort of decide uh, whether or not to enter a security and exit another one. Isn't so, that a lot of work? It is, but to beat the market. Do you think you're well really equipped, well skilled, well capacitated yeah. to be able to do that? Yeah, um, I think we have uh, the right skill. Um, as Morgan and Cole, we also have the right skill at TN Assets, and we have uh, a good backing from all international partners. Um, we've been in the market for decades, so I think uh, we're in a good position to actually do this. And um, just to add on to the rebalancing, um, there's always a balance. We, you know, need to make sure that you get into the good stocks, but that whole process of rebalancing is also expensive. So we'll do it in such a way that, you know, we still maintain that active edge that we, we, we you know, we are advertising, um, but also keep the costs low, um, so that the overall effect is that, you know, we really, really beat the market. Yeah, but then if 3% of the world's actively managed funds are not beating the market, what makes you think you will beat the market? I mean, how, how many, and so far, uh, the stocks that you've picked have not been good performers on the market this year. What makes you think that they will win going forward? Uh, um, there's a lot of study that goes behind this. Uh, but, you know, people think, you know, if something has gone down for the past two years, it's good. Continue, it's going to continue going down or whatever the trends have been the case in the past two years are going to persist but what we see sometimes in the market is, is actually an upturn and things actually change. Do you actually think institutional investors are ready for that? I mean they would go for a passive fund where they know that these are returns and then there are not a lot of expectations there. Do you think that we are ready for this? It's a game of trust as well. I mean, TN has a lot of institutional investors as clients. Mm -hmm. So naturally, if they're the ones who are the asset managers behind it, they have a proven success rate. In it. They have the second largest assets under management in the country. So it's not like we're coming as a new asset manager. We don't have a license to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, our research is already renowned. Thanks to Tafar and Batana, and they're now the youngsters they've invited into the firm. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, there's a backing. It's all about trusting by now. Really, it's all about trust. I think that's why we chose TN as the asset manager. Okay, so you guys as investment analysts, what do you think is the best option for investors? To get into ETFs, because there's going to be more. I know we're expecting one more in this uh, upcoming quarter. Do you mutual funds, unit trusts, um, stock market directly? What do you think is the best investment option for for institutional investors or even retail investors? I think for institutional investors, of course, they're going to want to do the stock picking themselves. They want to keep that option um, you know, available to them. So I think most of them would want to keep you know, doing what they've been doing, uh, even before the ETFs are in the picture. Um, but I think this, uh, these ETFs are very, I think, uh, is a good advantage for small scale retail investors who don't know much about the market, but they really want to make some returns. Um, they just, I think it's a cheap, it's a very cheap way, very fluid and very flexible way to gain exposure in the market and you don't have to worry about which stocks to buy, at what time, at what price, and all those things that are very important questions. Um, so that task is now with TN and with us, um, such that the investor doesn't need to worry much about when to get into the market at what time to, to, you know, to recalibrate their portfolio. So I think this um, is really a good case for the retail investors. It's very cost efficient because the ETF draws the same cost as an equity. So, yeah, and which have more exposure to more stocks, the same cost. So the question that has often been asked by retail investors in these C trade groups or ZSC direct groups is the dividends. 
do you actually get to enjoy the same kind of dividend that uh, a direct investor would actually enjoy? So with us, um, we're still having an ongoing debate on whether or not to redistribute the dividends or reinvest. So I think naturally because the first year we're still starting off, I'm sure we're going to reinvest it because um, we believe dividends are quite unattractive at the current levels. I think over time we'll then redistribute to investors as the fund shows it's you know strong performance over time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would rather prefer to reinvest. Yeah, but from your stock selection, how many actually pay a dividend? Yeah. That's also another fact. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the, 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 actively, the active management part of the portfolio means we be you know, we're getting into stocks that are not yet declaring dividends, you know, maybe they're focusing on um, beefing up their operations and increasing efficiencies mm -hmm. and all these things. Um, but over the long term, uh, maybe they'll start declaring dividends. But the focus of the ETF is not to gain returns over dividends, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly through capital gains. Okay, so how much is your yeah. initial yeah. capital yeah. that you're putting yeah. into this ETF? Uh, currently, it's 500 million, but we might raise it to a billion. Okay, and mm. the weights? You haven't decided on the weights yet? So, the weights we're not allowed to publicly disclose uh, because ZDSC is just doing the final titles on our perspectives, and once we publish it on our website, then we can advertise the weights. Okay. Yeah. But uh, OMS is definitely, definitely is the highest weight. <laughs> why? <laughs> but it's the most elite page, so why would you have That's that? That's exactly why. Oh, so the good thing about um, ETFs is that a market maker whose role is to make sure that there is liquidity. Um, so we have managed to secure some really strategic um, uh, you know, partners who have some positions in those stocks that can allow us to move in and out should the need arise. So that risk, I think, we've um, aptly, you know, I mean, okay, so your views overall on these new products that are coming into the market, do you actually think we have enough depth in this market to be able to absorb them all? Because it just looks like we're being hit <laughs> every week. There's another <laughs> cattle product or an ETF now, next year we'll have a gold product and we'll have derivatives, we'll have <laughs> all sorts. Do you mm. actually think this market is deep enough for such? Um, and that we are ready. <laughs> depth is one thing. Are we actually ready to be able to absorb this product? Yeah, so to answer the first question, is the market deep enough? Um, I would say... You know, we're not really de uh, deep enough to, to, you know, to, to get all this. But I think there's always room for growth. Um, you know, I think if we start doing these ETFs and these other products, it might incentivize, you know, the powers that be to actually, you know, start increasing the depth of our market. How do they increase the depth of the market? Um, they can have more listings, they can have more financial instruments. Why would anyone they want to list in ZDC or <laughs> 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 yeah, that's always the question, but you know, we still see some com some companies just you know like there is a metric um, restructuring and you know changing its it's, 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 it's structure, yeah. structure. Yeah, so there's there's still some scope. There's very little at the moment because of the current fundamentals and you know landscape, but there is uh, potential. And then the second question is, uh, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think for an ETF, they are ready. It's, it's, it's a simple um, instrument. Um, if we're talking about things like derivatives, options, and futures, that would be a very complicated uh, discussion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be very risky. But I think in, if, you know, if that comes to, to, to fruition, you know, if those things come, I think we'll follow the model out there where we first restrict it to very high net worth individuals who can take on such a risk. And not put it to the, you know, the average investor who could lose all their savings if things go sideways. Mm -hmm. I think it's also about education. It's about educating retail investors and those that are novices to the market. And I think um, we're trying to do that more at webinars and just trying to communicate to people that are, you know, thinking about getting into stocks or putting their money or savings somewhere. So I think that that's what's lacking in the market. It's mainly education. People want money change instead of invest. They want quick solutions instead of long term. Well, I read through your story. I missed your webinar, by the way. I only joined in late because I thought it was starting at 2.30. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> we'll start things after lunch and you would ask yourself if that's something at two. But <laughs> these guys <laughs> um, you did talk about the risks that are there um, on these kind of instruments. Do you want to just um, quickly just go through them? Um, so I'd say for this specific asset, it's exposed to sector risk. So if the financial services sector experiences an exogenous shock um, that affects all the underlying securities, that will obviously affect our ETF. And um, we also have the expense risk. Uh, as Tafara was saying, we have to be very careful with how often we trade because um, naturally an actively managed ETF is more costly than a passive one. Mm-hmm. And um, which other risk would I say is, uh, I think, trading risk. But I also see that as an opportunity. Uh, that's where the net asset value is lower um, than the actual market price. Yeah. So that presents an opportunity for investors, actually. Yeah. They, they could buy it now, then sell it at market value. Um, so that's an arbitrage opportunity. And um, closure risk. Uh, with any fund, uh, there's, obvi- there's obviously always that risk that it will close. 100 ETFs close globally. Uh, but of course, um, we aim to not um, <laughs> close this one. But yeah, it's always a risk. Yeah. Eric, so um, your parting shots. Tell the people to invest. <laughs> <laughs> invest with Morgan. Our word is our bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. You won't go wrong with this one. Uh, we put so much work in this, and uh, hopefully you'll see it um, and partake of it next year. Okay, so please do keep your monies aside for this multi-sector ETF, although it's predominantly financial. So it should be a financial ETF, really. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's, let's just call it by the name that they prefer to call it by, multi-sector ETF. <laughs> anyway, so that's it from us. Um, so do enjoy your holidays. We'll see you next year on Tambara. 3rd of January. 3rd of January. 3rd of January at the listing, please. (laughs) (laughs) 